Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com, ElectronicLessons.com, and PaintballProps.com. This is project number 18 for our multi-project electronics learning board. This project is called Hardware Debouncing and Other Stuff. Um, by other stuff, we're going to show you how de debouncing affects uh, a, a hardware system. Now what debounce is, is say we've got a switch. Uh, this is what's called a single pole double throw switch. It works kind of like a relay. You switch in one direction and the common pin connects to one side. You switch it uh, into the other direction and it disconnects from this pin and connects to this pin. So what I've got here is one of my pins connected to VCC, 5 volts, and the other connected to ground. And what's called my wiper pin will be connected to the clock of my 74LS93 decade counter. So what happens is, when I toggle states, I will get some mechanical bounce from the switch where the logic goes from high to low uh, many times within, a, within a, a short amount of time. It's just called bounce. So we can, if for hardware debouncing, we can, there's many different circuits we can use. We're going to use our 555 timer in monostable mode. Uh, software debouncing occurs when you have a microcontroller and you can actually program it in delays. But that's a whole other story. Now, as I said, there are many different ways to uh, hardware debounce a circuit. In school, they taught us a way to use uh, two NAND gates and a couple pull-up resistors and a, and a single pull level throw switch, but that really is unnecessary. Using a 555 timer takes up about half of the, the hardware necessary for it. So I like to use the 555 timer in monostable mode to create a pulse, single pulse width. Now we've used this principle before. Now what we're going to do is we're going to connect this switch directly to our clock input of our 74LS93 decade counter and of course that's connected to our 7 segment display and 74LS47 decoder. Um, if you haven't watched the tutorials, they are listed below. Uh, we're going to activate our 74LS93 decade counter by grounding one of the AND pins. It doesn't matter which one. Again, to understand what the AND pins do, please watch the tutorials below and or uh, hopefully you've been watching some of the project videos because this has been explained about 10 times before. Anyhow, using uh, two uh, two components, a resistor and a capacitor, you can program in basically how long the delay is. Not really program. We have the capacitor on the 555 timer on the board is fixed, but we have uh, a potentiometer labeled DLY that will allow us for make our to, to make our delay short or long. We're going to strive to make our delay about 250 milliseconds, or rather one-fourth of a second long. And that will act, act to eliminate the bounce. So we will essentially, for this circuit, we will get this. Bouncing on the rising, bouncing on the falling when we turn the switch off. But for our 555 timer, we use the S1 DLY pin or, or button, push it, and we'll get a nice, clean, single pulse. And that pulse, will, again, can be, can be adjusted using the DLY variable resistor. So we'll connect the DLY pin on the main pin block to the clock pin on the main pin block, N1 or N2, doesn't matter which one, to the ground uh, line, the common ground line on the power supply pin block, and that will be our debounced circuit. Now how, what we're going to do is, if we connect this circuit, or this switch, to the clock input, forget about the 555 timer, what's going to happen is, we're going to make one switch, and it's going to increment the 5, the, the 7 segment display a few times, because it's not debounced. It's basically toggling states, or incrementing, a few times every time you, you switch it on and switch it off. So, first we'll do that just to show you the effects of bounce, and then we will debounce the circuit by connecting our DOY pin to our clock pin. Now, this is a, a very important lesson because, especially when you're in school for the first year, you will be dealing with a lot of uh, digital circuitry that is very susceptible to bounce. Later on in school, you'll likely get into microcontrollers where this isn't so much of an issue. But when you are making Especially counter circuits, if you're going to be pressing a button to increment, you, you want to make sure that your signal is debounced. So let's look at this on the board. Now I've turned out the light so that you can see the 7 segment display better. I've actually connected my AND pins, AND1 and AND2, to OUT B and OUT D, so that it will reset back to 0 after a count of 9. Or rather, it'll count from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, then reset back to 0. So if we have a debounced uh, switch, it will increment every time we press it from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. But what happens when I use this switch? I've got one line connected to the clock input, uh, the other connected to the, the wiper pin connected to clock, as talked about in our circuit, one, the other side connected to ground, and the, the other side, the opposite side, connected to 5 volts. So let's turn it on and off. See, it's not behaving as it should. That's a heck of a bounce right there from 1 to 7. 
So that is an un, uh, that is a non-debounced circuit. We want to debounce that. So what we're going to do first is we're going to calibrate our um, our 555 timer in monostable mode uh, to offer a pulse of roughly 200 milliseconds. So let me unplug this wiring and uh, we can start there. The first thing I'm going to want to do is connect our DLY output labeled DLY on the board to our LED. Our LED is right here. I'm hoping you can see it. I'm going to press my S1 DLY button. So as you can see the LED, the pulse width is about one second now. Now I can adjust that by adjusting the onboard DLY potentiometer seen here. So that's about a fourth of a second. I'd say that's about 150 to 200 milliseconds. That should be enough. So now let's connect our DOI output to our clock input. Okay. So that was some bounce just from insertion there. So let me press my DOI button. So just in case you can't see, success. We have, prop we have properly uh, debounced our circuit. For a tutorial on the 555 timer in monostable mode, check out the tut tutorial below. We've got two more videos. Our last video will be our finale, and that will be modulating uh, audio along a laser, and then receiving it and amplifying it. So that's what I'm really, really looking forward to. Two bro projects left, guys. If you've made it this far, thanks so much. I hope you're enjoying these videos. Take care and have a great day.